Hey guys, James here today and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be something a little bit different. Recently I went over to TwitchCon in San Diego and while I was there Frontier actually hooked up a special experience with the San Diego Zoo to go behind the scenes and have a look around. You guys recently have been really enjoying all the Planet Zoo content that I've been doing and I've been really excited for the game as well. I'm super excited for Planet Zoo. And since the game is no longer available to play right now, it doesn't come out to November 5th, which I'm super excited for. I've been really craving some more Planet Zoo action. Today we have some footage where I went to the zoo, spoke to a keeper all about hippos and you know, how to actually care for them because we had a few issues in the past. Hippopotamus contains a dead animal. Oh. <laughs> Hippopotamus looks so lonely. Yeah, he's lonely. It's okay, guys. Do we have another one, or is it... Or do we just have two? Oh, are they gone now? The bones. Yeah. Don't, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's good. I guess they I guess they weren't cleaned up, but they, they kind of... Oh. Uh-oh. Is this good or bad with hippos? I don't know. Is this like a... Is this, <laughs> is this a good thing? Wait, are you dead or are you sleeping? Uh... Uh-oh. Well, that's not my fault. What can I say? Easy come, easy go. Though in real life it's very different and I think it's actually really important and a little super special. And if you guys are interested, do keep watching because I think you will enjoy it. Hey guys, James here today and welcome to a very special video here at San Diego Zoo. Today, I'm going to be having a close-up look at the hippos. You guys know that I've had my ups and downs with them in the past, but I think today I'm going to really learn a few things that might help me out. And thank you so much to Planet Zoo for bringing me out here. I'm here with Jen and you're going to be showing us something to do with the hippos, right? That's right. We have two river hippos here at the San Diego Zoo and we have Otis and Funani. Funani is currently enjoying a little bit of enrichment we call the water cannon. As you can see, Funani is certainly enjoying <laughs> a little bit of a water massage. Who doesn't love a good water massage, right? Does it, does it also like help clean their mouths out as well, and like around their teeth and, and all that? Absolutely, it's a good water pick as well. But fortunately for them, uh, they have some fish that are gonna help keep them clean. So which, uh, which hippo do we have here? This is Funani. She's 35 years old. She Ooh. weighs at about 3,500 pounds. Okay. Uh, but females can actually get to be up to 6,000 pounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. I heard before that she's had a lot of calves as well. She has had a few calves over the years. She's had 12. 12. Uh, but here at the, here, um, it, this facility, she's had eight total. And oh, wow. she was okay. at another zoo um, previously. Mm -hmm. And she's been paired up with several males over the years based on the species survival plan. Uh, but because Funani has, um, lived here since this exhibit opened in 1995. This is her domain. She views this as her home and Otis only uses parts of it that she allows to have happen. How are they faring in the wild then? Are they being like poached or like are they, well, like what's, what's happening with them? Unfortunately with wild river hippos, uh, a big problem that they're facing is poaching for bushmeat trade as well as the ivory trade. Now those teeth are pretty remarkable. They look awfully strange, I, I get that. <laughs> they don't need a dentist. They're perfectly designed for what the hippo needs to use them for. But unfortunately, people view uh, those teeth as something that might make a good uh, you know, tchotchke or something mm. to put on your shelf. So it's, it's really important then that they are having uh, like new calves and zoos and all that as well to really help population as well. Absolutely. The the population of, of river hippos in North American zoos isn't diverse enough at this point. Okay. Um, so it's really important that we have a good, healthy, viable population that we can make sure that we can connect people that might not be able to get to Africa to see them in the wild, as well as get a chance to connect some the next generation and to protect these animals and understand that, that there are big problems in the wild for them. So how, how much are they eating? And like, what, what are they eating on a daily well, basis? From dusk until dawn, they are out mm. browsing. They go out and they graze on big grassland habitats. So they want to eat as much as possible. And typically it's about 90 to 100 pounds of grass that they need to eat wow. every okay. single night. We're never in the same space as the hippo. Uh -huh. There's always a protected barrier between us and the hippos. And we want to 
ask them to come over. We want them to want to come over and, and interact with us so that we can make sure that they look good, they don't have any wounds, their teeth aren't broken. Their teeth break sometimes, it happens. Mm -hmm. And so we have a really good plan, a uh, training plan with them where they come over, they open their mouth, they allow us to touch all their teeth with a rasp, a file. If ever they were to come over and there was an issue, then we can take care of it right there. Yeah. And they're used to yeah, that. Yeah, that's amazing. About their pooping. Yes. They, do they spin their tail? When they, they do don't it? spin their don't tail. Do it's more like a windshield wiper. Okay. It goes back and so, forth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but hippos <laughs> to, poop to a get lot. around where it wants to go. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it goes everywhere. So how many um, people are working to care for the, the hippos here? Like how many keepers and vets and all that kind of stuff? There are quite a few keepers in our team, uh, but Typically on a on a daily basis, it's just one. Okay. So I I work with them most of the time, but we have other keepers that are trained in the area and work with them as well. And they have this fantastic thing called blood sweat. Have okay. you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. Okay, so no. it's actually a mucus that their body secretes. And years okay. ago, keepers collected right here at the San Diego Zoo. They collected the blood sweat and they sent it off to the universities, and they found out that this is a mucus that their body produces and when it dries on their skin it crystallizes and when it crystallizes it creates a force field and it locks in moisture and it reflects the sun's rays oh wow so it's super i mean so, if we could have something like that right <laughs> yeah and so before they did that no one really knew what it they was they didn't doing. know what it was it just looked like they're bleeding but yeah so yeah. blood sweat i mean they knew it was obviously beneficial yeah. why would they have yeah, it yeah. Um, but then the other bonus to all that is that it has antiseptic properties. Oh, wow. So getting back to the fact that they're very violent, they fight a lot, they get all kinds of wounds, they have their own antiseptic right oh, there. Their awesome. own Neosporin, so to speak, <laughs> right on them. So normally, um, you get a chance to see a hippo from down below. Yeah. This is a little extra special. So I'm just gonna toss in a piece. Otis might even yeah, open up. <laughs> you might think, but I can't. I will not be able to make it that far. Punani turn. Here we go, let's see, can you open? And this is where it's deceiving. It looks like it would be so easy to get this right in. Oh, I hey. did, good deal. It's <laughs> amazing. So while she's eating, getting back to the, the dynamics of our, of our crew, he might go and try to sneak and, and eat that while she's busy. It's a much bigger distance, but you can really see those tusks. <laughs> and then those teeth that stick straight out on the bottom, yeah. those incisors, those are great shovels. So getting back to the fact that they go out to those grasslands and they eat all that grass, there's sometimes grass that they don't want, it's dry and icky, they don't want it. So they use that to shovel aside. So those teeth are always growing throughout their life. So yeah. getting back to the training aspect of it, uh, where we're working with their teeth every day, they're allowing, they come and they station, they put their, their chin up on a bar, they open their mouth, they can work inside their mouth. That's incredible. Um, it really it's really incredible. And that's why amazing. I say it, it's you've built up this relationship. Yeah. You've built up this trust. Now, thankfully, they're not like crocodiles where they snap their mouth shut really fast. It's very slow. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. There we go. We'll see. Oh, that was close. <laughs> I tried. There we go, he got it. So all of those teeth, those big teeth that you see right up front are growing their entire life. Okay. They break. Um, then they have all those molars in the back. Those are their grinding teeth and those are permanent. Once they're in, they're in. So we really monitor that. You know, they might get down too low. They look pretty good, right? You can see those molars back there. They look, they don't look too bad. And you know, when their mouth is open, it makes like an hourglass shape. So getting back to where their eyes are located, and the fact that they open their mouth when they're threatening, they need to see if what they're threatening is still coming at them or if it's retreating. And by having that hourglass shape to their mouth, they can see right around it eventually. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for this. This has been amazing. Oh yeah, to my see pleasure. Them this way. Well, good. I, again, they're amazing animals. Yeah. I want everyone to know how incredible they are. I want people to, to feel passionate about mm. protecting them and all the other animals on the yeah. planet. So. I'm glad you were able to come and meet them. Yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. Cheers.
Well, I hope you guys learned something new and something exciting about these incredible creatures. I've had a lot of fun and I've learned a bunch of new things that I can take into the game and hopefully care for these animals a little bit better. But thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you next time and have an awesome day.